Hello everybody. Welcome to Word Shard. Today's video is for class 9s and 10s ICSC. The chapter's name is Old Man at the Bridge. Today's topic is Old Man at the Bridge which is written by the famous author Ernest Hemingway. First of all, we should first we should know who is this man Ernest Hemingway? Ernest Miller Hemingway was an American novelist, short story writer and journalist who was born in USA uh, in the year 1899. He has written a number of works, the, for example, A Farewell to Arms, isn't it? These works talk about the war and its effects and its bad effects, the ill effects of war. And this is because he was quite acquainted to these kinds of situations as he had participated in the Italian front to enlist with the World War I ambulance drivers. And even in the Second World War in 1941, Hemingway served as a correspondent and was present at several, at several of the war key moments. Okay, so he was a participant of these activities, okay, these drastic, these destructive activities. So what he is going to talk about is the ill effects of war. And uh, first of all, uh, before we move into the chapter, we first should know what is the background of this chapter? What is the background of the story? What pictures do we see here? We see pictures of an artillery. Okay, we see a picture of an artillery over here. Then we have pictures of uh, people fighting in the war. So this is the background of the story the story talks about what the spanish civil war the story talks about the spanish civil war this part is very important therefore i will highlight it you will have to remember it spanish civil war even if you don't remember the year in which it happened you must remember the background it is the spanish civil war at the time of the spanish civil war and what happened at this time at this time uh, the, the Spanish loyalists, obviously when there is a war, there are two sides to it. So there are the Spanish loyalists and the Republicans. Republicans, uh, uh, Spanish loyalists are the Republicans and on the other side we had the fascists or the people like Hitler, Mussolini, Francisco Franco. These people were on one side which is the fascism and the other side was the republicanism or the side of the Spanish loyalists. Who are these Republicans? These are the ones who speak for the republics, for the people. But fascists are a, are a uh, group of people who, are, who, believe in the, um, uh, who believe in a very uh, harsh, oppressive kind of a situation where they do not accept opposition at all. They will not accept any. For example, if I say that you will have to write with a blue pen, then you have to write with a blue pen. You cannot just say that, ma'am, I do not have a blue pen in my house. May I write with a black pen? No. So fascists were that kind of people who did not accept any kind of uh, separate ideas or oppositions. They were staunch believers in whatever they wanted to do. Okay, so this were the two sides between whom the Spanish Civil War was fought. Now we will move on to the chapter. This is the backdrop. The Spanish Civil War was going on at that time. And at that particular time, we see this situation. An old man. We have a description of the old man. He was wearing steel rimmed spectacles. You will, you will see the meanings of the words, the difficult words written in red. You can write it down in your book itself. Steel rimmed spectacles means the steel frames of the spectacles. He was wearing steel framed spectacles and he was also wearing very dusty clothes, dirty clothes. And he was sitting, why dusty? Because he has walked a lot of distance to come to this place. In the wartime situation, there is always a lot of threat everywhere. You face the threat everywhere. Maybe you face a threat in your house itself. Now you will have to travel far away from your house so that you are in a safer place. So this man has also walked a lot of distance and therefore his clothes were all dirty, dust covered. He was sitting by the side of the road. Where, what was he doing? He was sitting by the side of the road. There was a pontoon bridge. Important. What do you mean by a pontoon bridge? A pontoon is a temporary bridge which you place over a water body or a particular place so that you can just cross that spot. But it is obviously a temporary bridge, not a permanent one. Now, there was a pontoon bridge and across the river and carts, trucks and men, women and children were crossing it. Why were these people crossing? 
the bridge and going to the other side because they were refugees they were moving from their own homes to some other land to some safer land because there was threat of the fascists isn't it we have already learned about the fascists the francisco the people of francisco franco now they were attacking so these people had to move away from their homes because their homes the place where they used to live that was under threat that is why they were leaving those places and they were drawing their carts okay they were pulling the carts they were pulling all their belongings they staggered moved with a lot of difficulty up the steep bank from the bridge with soldiers helping push against the spokes of the wheels what are spokes spokes refer to this kind of the these things are there in the carts isn't it so the soldiers were helping those people to push the carts up the bridge so that they could cross the bridge and go to the other side they were being helped by the spanish loyalists they were the army the, they were the soldiers who were helping the common people the the village people to move to the other side of the bridge let's move to the next page the trucks ground up and away heading out of it all and the peasants plodded plodded means walk slowly they were walking slowly because they had all those huge amount of uh, load with them isn't it they were carrying everything all of their property that they could carry with them so they were walking slowly with the carts and their family along in ankle deep dust now obviously this is a temporary bridge over here and uh, they had to cross the temporary bridge there was dirt and dust all over the road they had come from this side and they had to cross the bridge and go to this other side that is why all all around this spot was dirt and dust so they were filled with dirt and dust covered but the old man sat there without moving now the, the old man was still sitting at this side of the bridge so if if we say that this is the bridge and the people had to cross the bridge and go to the other side if this is the bridge and they had to cross it the old man was sitting at this spot he was not moving from his place he was sitting at this side of the bridge and a lot of Uh, that place was at risk so the soldiers were telling the people to move to the other side but the old man was still sitting at this side of the bridge now he was too tired to go further we ask ourselves why is the man not why is the old man not moving to safety because the old man was very tired he has walked a long way maybe his village was some somewhere very far and he has walked all the way to this bridge but he was so tired that he could not cross the bridge and go it was my business to cross the bridge my means this is the narrator the narrator is a person who is given a duty this is a person who is given the duty to check the other side of the bridge the narrator is is an army scout who narrates the story and he encounters this old man at the pontoon bridge he is a scout he has been given the duty to check the bridge head to check up to which spot the army has the the enemy has advanced how far the enemies have already come in okay to check that place the soldier this army scout was sent i did this that means the narrator performed his duty and when he returned while going he had he had seen this old man sitting at this place now while he was returning he again sees the old man sitting at the same spot that means he has not moved from his place there were not so many carts now so the people who were crossing those refugees who were crossing the bridge all those people had come to this side now no people were here everybody has crossed this part of the this side of the bridge and they have gone to the other side so there were not so many carts now and very few people on foot but the old man was still there so in at this side while the narrator had come to check the spot maybe he has come to this place to check the spot to check the bridge head and now when he goes back he sees the old while coming to this place he had seen that there were many people who were crossing the bridge but now when he comes back he sees that the old man is sitting in the same place but the people who were crossing this side of the bridge have all gone to the other side that means they have gone to safety but the old man is still at high risk because he is still at this side of the bridge okay so where do you come from so i asked the old man that means the narrator as the old man where have you come from so he this one is important he has come from san carlos he said that was his native town that means he has lived here since his birth and it gave him pleasure to mention it and he smiled so this old man is very happy that somebody is asking him about his homeland you become very happy when somebody asks you about your homeland because 
that person has left the homeland and he knows that soon there will be an attack and maybe his house will be destroyed so he is very happy when a person asks him about his home i was taking now what was this old man doing the old man was just taking care of his animals look at the condition of this person he was a very old man he was taking care of his animals he had done no harm to anybody neither has he been a part of the spanish loyalists nor was he part of the fascists but none of the two groups he supported he was a very innocent man and he was living harmlessly at one corner of the village so that he could take care of his animals but now he is also removed from his own home he has been taken his animals are at high risk because he could not bring the animals with him they are still at his place and there will be an attack soon his animals might die so he explained oh i said not quite understanding now the narrator has not understood that why is it talking about his animals now at this high risk yes he said i stayed you see taking care of animals why did i stay back in my village because i because the old man did not want to leave his animals and come from his homeland that is why he stayed over there he was the last one to leave the town of san carlo when all the other villagers have left from that place only then the old man had decided to leave because the old man did not want to come out from his home old people are very attached to their homeland isn't it they don't want to leave their homeland they want to die at their own houses isn't it so that is why this old man also wanted to take care of his animals and live with them till his death but ultimately he had to move he did not look like a shepherd now this narrator is thinking that the old man is saying that he was taking care of his animals so the narrator felt that he might be a shepherd or a herdsman who are these people these are the people who take care who who uh, does a business with animals who are the owner and keeper of animals you know people keep a lot number of sheep a number of goats and they milk them and they sell their wool so that is the business that they do but this person did not this old man did not look like a shepherd or a herdsman and i looked at his black dusty clothes and gray dusty face and his steel rim spectacles and said what animals were they now the narrator is asking the old man that what type of animals you had at your home he says various animals and shook his head i had to leave them the old man is very worried about the animals he loves his innocent animals he loves they are his pets so he is very careful about them he did not want to leave them i was watching the bridge now this narrator was watching the bridge this narrator was constantly checking the other side of the bridge to see if the enemies have advanced or not if the enemy have advanced has advanced or not the african looking country of the ebro delta this ebro delta is the place where the fascists were going to attack this is the ebro delta okay this part and the ebro river is over here and they were crossing the ebro river okay the people the the people the refugees were crossing the ebro river okay and the delta is this place so he was looking at the narrator was looking at this ebro delta and it looked very much like the african country okay next uh, and wondering how long now it would be before we would see the enemy so he was wondering that soon there would be the uh, the threats of the enemies they would be firing and he could hear the firing of the enemies and then he had to go he have to go for the for his duty to perform his duty so he was waiting for it but and listening all the while for the first noises that would signal that ever mysterious event called contact what do you mean by contact contact means when these fascists will be attacking with their artillery with their guns with their heavy guns and all that when they are going to attack the first attack that would be it would be called the contact the start of firing and everything that would be the contact so this man this uh, the scout that is the narrator was waiting for that moment when he had to go on and carry out his duties he had to fight to save the country up to this we will do today and next day we will move into further detail and the next part of the chapter i hope you have liked my video if you have liked it please like and subscribe and also comment if you have any questions thank you so much children